Hello. I had recently the chance to make an interview with Nicolas Johannes Leckerkerk, who curated the exhibition Shadows of Taupt in Tallinn Art Hall. I had not seen the exhibition prior to our meeting, but I thought this is actually like the perfect starting point for an interview. I had heard that the exhibition is about time, and this was the first question with which I approached Nicolas. So Nicolas told me about uh, how we underestimate the present, how the past and the future are dominating over the present, and how the contemporary in this context has become corrupt. Without knowing anything about the exhibition, I could see there the references to Bergson and to Croes, and in this context, talk along with Nicolas. And this would be all very much okay, if not one of the main topics we talked about would not have been the criticism of the mainstream art system. So, one of the crucial moments uh, in the interview that you are going to watch is actually in the end of the interview, when Nikolaus tells me that he actually felt as if I would have seen the exhibition. And I answer him that, yeah, we will see if I have seen it. Whereas, actually, it is already very obvious from our talk that I have seen it. If you go out from what we talked about, then actually, I have seen it. Okay, the exhibition had many layers, which we did not touch, and which were there, and which I saw, and will, which will function for me in some other contexts. But th this is not the point. The point is that there is a mainstream in criticizing the mainstream art system itself. But I understood this only after I had talked to Nicolas. So this introduction here is meant to function as a disclaimer. I just want to point out that we are both actually very much aware of the potential demagogy in the talk that we had. The mainstream art system, which functions in the framework of capitalism, has itself become very similar to the capitalistic system. The capi capitalism is very... Capitalism takes the criticism towards it very easily. I think uh, the criticism of capitalism is actually one of the crucial things for, that the capitalism itself needs to function normally. And it seems to me that the mainstream art system functions in a similar way. It needs to be criticized to function normally and that there is a mainstream in how we criticize. The mainstream actually proves that this is true. And I don't have a positive program to break the chain. The only thing I can do at the moment is to uh, refer to Slavoj Žižek and tell, tell you something like don't act, just think. But you know, it's cool that they yeah. did it. Though. Yeah, they yeah. Do, like, yeah, they show like uh, the nature of, uh, yeah, of how it is today. To work in the national radio. Yeah, exactly. To act quite honest in a way. So, um, so I forgot to charge the battery, so I'm not sure for how long it will work, but it should work. So maybe we get even some video, but if we don't, then we have uh, then we have an audio. Great, perfect. Um, so I don't know even where to start. Oh, uh, first of all, I have to admit I am in a really... Uh, I, don't know, I think I am in an excellent position mm. uh, because I haven't seen the exhibition. I see. Yeah, yeah. And when I saw you sitting here, then I thought like, oh yeah, this is the perfect timing yeah. for an interview, so... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can so we, go, we, we can go there without any kind of preconceived knowledge uh, about what it is. Uh, yeah. And I think that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, uh, so... And, 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 and at all, it's like... Um, Maybe maybe my questions will be more sincere towards the exhibition. <laughs> but um, let's see, how, how did you end up here? In this sense, that uh, how did you end up to curate the exhibition? Yeah, I think it's um, there. Are of course, longer versions and shorter versions, and I'll do a short version. Okay. So is that Chris Rasa, who is the artistic director of the festival, mm -hmm. um, worked for the Whitechapel Gallery in London some time ago, and. 
I happened to be on a course, an uh, MA course in London, and that was between a university and the Whitechapel Gallery, like this com combination course. Um, and I was lucky like last year in December to, to receive a, a curatorial prize, and it was awarded at the Whitechapel Gallery. And Crystal Rasser was there at the same time, and as she worked there before, she spoke to one of my professor's tut tutors, uh, Daniel Herman, who is a curator at the Whitechapel Gallery, and he asked, like, I'm looking for someone uh, to engage with for the photo month, and do you know any curator uh, who could do it? And um, so he tipped me, and I was awarded this this prize, and then I met with Crystal, um, say, for half an hour for a coffee, and she just briefly explained the, the aims of the photo month. And from that onwards, um, we started to collaborate. So this was last December, and we... Um, uh, develop the the concept. Basically, I I wrote um, I wrote a concept and I proposed it to Crystal after our meeting in December, and I think that was then agreed upon, and we start to develop the exhibition. So, basically, it all started in London, rather than in Tallinn. <laughs> Uh, yeah, obviously that can be felt in the exhibition. I, I looked at the at the names. It's, it's, it's like really very international. So in a way, it is like uh, from, yeah, there are some uh, from, people from the outside to the inside. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think it's um, <coughs> not to say it's an odd mixture, but it's it's a it's a rather. I hope a contrived combination of various kind of geographical locations and also uh, research positions and also partially based on friendship. So you'll see that, uh, for example, artists I've worked for before, worked with before um, in London, for example, David Raymond Conroy, uh, who is now in this exhibition, I met when I was living uh, and working in London. Um, and generally, it's my aim to not to be a curator of fashion and to kind of pick what is uh, most popular at a certain point, but to continue these, these dialogues and conversations and work with um, the same artist um, again and again, hopefully. So, for example, with, with David, it's a continuation of, um, yeah, of a working process, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> About this uh, concept part, uh, I, I was told <laughs> yeah. that your exhibition is um, like when Anneli Bori curated exhibition in Tartu, and yeah. she uh, made uh, not uh, put a space in the center of her concept. I, I, I was told that uh, in, uh, at least in a way, in the center of your concept is uh, time. Is yeah, it yeah. so? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's totally correct. Um, so we make. I mean, the photo festival in general makes a nice kind, kind of space-time effort. Um, whereas this, this exhibition, I think, divert, diverts from. I think it encapsulates, of course, both space and time. But um, generally, this exhibition um, or the works in this exhibition revolve around this idea of of the present moment. And what I wanted to do within the framework of the photo festival is to um, to slice through a bit this 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 over indebtedness to photography as a medium proper like this fixed medium you will normally express yourself in within a two-dimensional shape and I thought it was, would be too um, too rigid too um, stiff to um, to address the ways in which uh, we are living today, so I think we we made a move from um, photography based to lens based to image based, and I think then from this kind of image based relationship, um, all this all of a sudden this this idea of of present time or the present moment became more prominent, um, and that was linked to the idea that we we have a strong say over indebtedness to to a past and future values and we re, uh, rely on it quite heavily to inform our lives is this this idea to to rely on on history as a kind of foundation from which we move or kind of the future prospect of things are 
uh, they inform our agendas in a way in the present, how we, how we transit, how we behave and maneuver. But I would argue that these, that these values are so often more um, ambiguous and fake and fictitious than, than we hold them to be. And that actually um, both past and future corrupt and empty out a bit um, this, this value which I guess is most prominent and that is, that is the present and we, we, we neglect it in a way in the sense we, we work within it and we activate it to, to um, allocate time to actions uh, and, and make decisions and engage in troubleshooting and um, so it, in essence it's like employing the present time to, um, to create this kind of sense of stability in one's life whereas I think actually just being, being in the present moment is so more uh, doubtful, uncertain and unclear than um, than, than, than that what we use it for. So I think this is maybe one of the aims of the exhibition is to, to show is that uh, to have an understanding of the present moment. When you, are, uh, when you were building up this, yeah. uh, this concept, like when you were conceptualizing it for yourself, or when you, uh, yeah, in a way you're just building it up, what, what did you uh, rely on? Where, where did the, the line of thought start? I mean, like when you describe I don't know, I could easily refer to Bergson's time concept, for example, course, or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, was, yeah. Was, was any of, uh, uh, of like some uh, theoretical or philosophical background also important for that? Or how, how, did, you, how did you start to develop it? What, what was the triggers for you? Or did you rely on somebody's work, that somebody had like a very dominant work on this team and then you started to search for other ones? So how did the idea for yourself in yeah. I think it became <coughs> more of this... this this analogy of very exa example. So, as you said, uh, Bergson is, of course, a, a very influential um, figure on the topic. But also, not the only one. Not the only one. I mean, it's also Deleuze. And uh, for this exhibition, um, of course, these these positions and these people they have been put forward, and they are. Um, being communicated within the exhibition, but I think as their theories they stem from uh, 1907 uh, onwards. Um, we were. I also work with some more current perspectives uh, by uh, from uh, Graham Harmon's uh, object-oriented uh, ontology or uh, Boris Groy's <coughs> critical theory on on time, and I think this, especially his statement on what is the contemporary and what is the present moment, I thought was. Uh, especially striking and prevalent in the sense uh, that he stated that um, we employ our present time to um, to get rid of uncertainty to get rid of doubts and to to be um, to be sure of ourselves but that actually the present is uh, is as he said an infinitely prolonged uh, period of delay and of prolongation and of uh, it's like this perfect time to be idle and to be lazy and to reflect on one's position and to be doubtful actually but we never we rarely use it for it <coughs> because I think in, in so in uh, in current society laziness or idleness is, is highly problem uh, problematic and we live in this very time pressure culture of high performance and um, we have to be active and if we tell people, like, actually, I'm not on a project, I'm not working on something, we feel a bit ashamed, because we always make up something that we're on, even if we're not on something. Um, so I think Boris Groys, uh, quite <coughs> in quite a simple and straightforward way, laid out this, this, this kind of conflict, or, um, yeah, I would say this, this conflict of, of, of time usage. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Um, for example, with with Graham Harmon, it's um, this idea that that objects and that objects and artworks and entities um, coexist as as equal as as a mutual thing, whereas still we think that there's a hierarchy from humans as being um, dominant over objects. And his theory is like there's more like like an, um, 
an equal engagement between objects and, and humans and non-humans. So, for example, the camera or the, the hat or the, the hair comb is actually equally important as a human being. So I think it's, uh, it also levels, in a way, um, the ways in which artworks could, could function, not as this, not as this, this kind of static thing that is there only for our usage. It's also something in and by itself. So I mean, this is maybe a bit more of an abstract notion which informed it on the, on the side, but... No, I have to admit that I'm very interesting in this notion, in the sense that I... And now I feel uh, myself bad that I did something, namely I did that... I had, I have lecturing uh, semiotics of art, well, actually yeah. I have a seminar, and yeah. uh, I was about to make the topic of the next seminar uh, phytos uh, sorry uh, physiosemiosis mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't and now I feel bad that I should should have done it and uh, I think I will do it but <laughs> after yeah, talking so. to you I, I have to reread those texts in this context again <laughs> for myself and make the students do it again I will forward them <clears throat> yeah I will, yeah. I will, I will, I will yeah I will check I will uh, make up for that mistake uh, but I wanted to um, oh, I forgot the question. Uh, you referred to uh, the past being used as uh, as a value system for the present, or just to evaluate yeah. and and to yeah, to value the present. Yeah, it's like this. Yeah, and uh, uh, and. In a way, it is opposed to what uh, Kroes is telling, like this cultural model that we have yeah. uh, since avant-garde. That, yeah. like, the moment is the best thing, and everything that is in the past should be like forgotten, like uh -huh. this futuristic idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, like burn the libraries. Yeah, burn the libraries. Yeah. Like throw Pushkin overboard, and yeah, uh, yeah, now we have this yeah. new international culture. Like, I see. You know, this yeah, yeah. idea yeah. is uh, yeah. like born out yeah. from the same yeah. idea that now we are all, everybody is in avant-garde, and. Um, and Croes' uh, 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 essay, or Croes' idea about the time, uh, in a way, grows out from this idea that yeah. the avant-garde sets us into the position where we have to, like, uh, we have to produce for the future. Uh -huh. like, yeah, you know, the the, the values more, are in the future. We yeah, are building yeah. up for it. This is more and, like this progression thinking. Yeah. But yeah. did you, when you were working uh, uh, with, with the artists and with their with, with their works, uh, did you see there any? Uh, uh, were they also dealing with this? Uh, no, I don't know. Not, not even problem. But did you see this conflict also in their works? Because I, 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 I do. Uh, I see it uh, for, for you as a curator, as you explain uh, here right now. Your concept, I see there this uh, conflict that you sense this conflict that in, at, at some point uh, yeah. history yeah. is valued at the other point the history is totally ignored and we have to uh, it's, it's pushed somewhere else. Yeah. Did you see this conflict also in the works or, or did you feel it when you were collecting the works that there is this this kind of conflict also? I think there is <clears throat> what, um, it's like one of the aims in the main in the main hall in the exhibition is to to actually balance and bring forward this 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 this, this zone of conflict between um, between uh, delaying and um, focusing on what we have in the present and to go in the present and go into the detail of it and the fabric really the fabric of the present as and in opposite of that is this urge of um, this urge for progression and production and we in, in positioning and also in uh, selecting and uh, corresponding on the works with the artists um, we try to bring forward this kind of this ambiguous conflictuous feeling so you see that <coughs> for example with Taro Fofaris' uh, work which is a grid of, um, of well-known corners in Tallinn city um, is that actually these these corners um, come to exemplify um, a way of, tra of, of, of moving within, within public space. So we'll cross corners on a daily basis on the way to our work or to any other kind of appointment. But we, once through his work, when you start to zoom in on the actual um, corner specifically, you, one, at one po point you lose the sense of um, of orientation because you need kind of the context in the building 
for it to to actually um, see what this is what this corner is part of and by folk by zooming in on these on these corners I think he's in in a sense he's proposing this 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 delay or this this kind of trigger or prompt of awareness for so how many turns do we take and how many turns do we actually take being unaware of all this all this movement so this is maybe more of this kind of delay or slowing down a trigger for becoming aware of this of this slowing down and on the opposite of that i think a strong example is philip gillison uh, gillison's work um, it's called i love new work which is a pun or this ironic pun on the t-shirt slogan often employed in this in this new york t-shirt i love new york and he made uh, um, the work i love new york which is um, which is a, it's a textile piece made of golden uh, raisins, which are um, like a million of golden raisins, which are then turned uh, to make up this text in black, I love new work. And he's commenting on this idea that as an artist working today, um, it's not so much that you ha that you'll that you'll find your inscription in, into contemporaneity by producing work currently but that you have to produce contemporary art in order to satisfy your gallerist and your and the art fairs so contemporary art in that becomes a very problematic thing is that is also as boris groy sta states is contemporary art that what is being uh, produced now and currently that is fresh and with wet paint on the wall or is it actually that kind of work that ha that is equipped or that has the potential to comment on our contemporary society and what philip gillison does quite strikingly and boldly with the statement is that showing that all this overproduction and making work and work for the sake of work uh, is not necessarily um, in tune or in line with contemporary society as such it's more like a syndrome or a condition of contemporary society because we have to be we have the feel or the inclination uh, to think that we have to be productive, so it's, there is this this conflict between. So what is contemporary as such? So what is what is com commenting on our present condition, and how is it informed by this 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 acceleration or this machine of production? So, so in this uh, in, in, in the context of his work, I might be even right that uh, that contemporary art as. Uh, as like this word, or, or like the, the contemporary ha art has turned into a term. Literally. It's a, it's like a style. It's, it has become a category. Yeah, it's a category. Exactly. It's a category that has been has become defined by the market. Yeah. So it's it's a market category, uh, yeah. which is um, like a spunk a spunk bomb of liquid cash. Yeah, and, and it works like when I or materialized cash. Yeah, so, so when used, one should uh, think about that it is referring to some kind of, uh, yeah, some kind, some category of art. Like when you say something is contemporary art, then you should like. Yeah, it, it's all thanks, I guess, to Andy Warhol and Damien Hirst. I mean, they are quite these prominent figures who, who anyway, shaped both more consciously and unconsciously, but both both were actually very market, market and marketing savvy, and. Um, I think, yeah, I think that Damien Hirst especially also make, made it inherent to his practice as an artist to include or incorporate marketing and market uh, mechanisms. So I think this, among very many other um, art practices or art production lines maybe, have informed this idea of contemporary art to be a category rather than um, something that is made to to comment on how we live today. Okay. I'm coming to uh, you as the curator and, and your relationship uh, with the works. Uh, how do you uh, how do you for yourself conceptualize like the, how to work with artworks? What are they for you? Do you Uh, let's say as an uh, like like as a tourist myself first of all like I'm, 
Yeah, Missy Mathieson, I actually, yeah. uh, I came to the art field uh, with, with like, a, like in, in a way with a circle or so. Yeah. Uh, so I uh, and I have been notorious for having uh, cloned the term uh, self-sufficient monologue that I refer mm. that I used to refer to art criticism. So actually, we don't need the work. Like I can I can even write art criticism without a piece of art. I see. I see. <laughs> so, but yeah. it is a bit excel- accelerated. But but there is a yeah. there is a point in in describing the relationship that, that actually the text and the work in a way can have uh, but, but then I have uh, started to you know, investigate different ways of how to relate to the work of art or like I uh, like how as I a gallerist for example work with artists yeah. like because as an uh, in, in art house I'm uh, I'm not curating the exhibitions there I in a way I put together the, the exhibition plan I am and even that I don't do only myself but I participate in that but in the course of an exhibition then usually yeah. like the curator comes from yeah. outside or the artist works himself in a way yeah so and, and this has teached me you know to look at the works a little bit uh, uh, like differently <laughs> and then I'm uh, all very intrigued like how do you consider for yourself this uh, piece of work to to for example use works as uh, can can a, can or does and if it does then do you use piece of works as for example like as a theoretical concept like mm. do, do those pieces of work uh, explain for you this uh, or, or describe for you too open new ways to describe this time and space uh, relationships in, in our society in a way yeah. or like in, in our world yeah. not even like society but in our world uh, or do you Or, or do you try to conceptualize yourself those works through those? What, what is like more important for you? Or, yeah. how, how do you self feel? How do you work with the works? Does, does the work tell you something? Or do you try to tell something about the work as a curator? I see. Um, I think generally put, how I con- consider curating for myself is that, that I think a curatorial practice is best used as a way to think contemporary society through artistic practices. So, in that sense, in a way, to think through contemporary society by means of artistic practice, the work becomes most prominent and is in the limelight, so to speak, or in the spotlight. Uh, And in that, I I think I'll be this... um, I like to be, to take a more... um, Engaged, but also dist- uh, more distant position to the work of art. So what I do, I make very close readings, sometimes even paranoid readings, of artistic practices and the works that are in that. To, if there is an overarching concept or a text, to be as close to the work as possible, so that not to commission work and not to infl- influence it, or not to that you have this sense that the work has to take a different angle in order to be valuable for your concept. This is what I dislike a lot. So what I try to do is get as close to the work and an understanding of the work so that I'm totally aware of the artist's aims with the work. And if that is in line or that is resonating with the text that I have proposed, uh, I would then establish a collaboration. So I always seek for those works that readily exist that are already part of someone's practice because I think it's very important that an artist is also interested in the subject mm-hmm. that will be part that will be um, the, the theme or the approach of the group exhibition so that you can have a bit of a mutual understanding within that so I think this closeness and this proximity to the work and to the artist uh, and not being um, say take this more hierarchical and dominant position as a curator in a way of shaping artworks in a certain way, I think has, at least for me, has proved to be a val- very um, uh, valuable valuable way of working. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this one, it's, it's very irritating. <laughs> <laughs> because I can't think and defend uh, myself. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit annoying. Yeah. But, um, okay, do, uh, do, do you want to add something? Did I, did I forget to ask anything uh, crucial? Um, I mean, you, I think you have been so sharp. Yeah. I actually think I, you have already seen the exhibition. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> we will see if I have seen it when I, when I go to see it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Welcome.